Let's swing over the southwest wall. That's where we find Steve Ratner with his charge. Steve, uh, let's dig into some of the details of this deal. We've talked a lot about the politics. Who got the better of this one? Well, I'm with Ed on this, and I think the headline on his op-ed kind of says it all, game set and almost match uh, to Biden. One thing to note about that bipartisan vote that you guys were just talking about is that there were more Republicans who voted against this, against the thing their own speaker had negotiated, than there were Democrats. Uh, you guys had some fun yesterday with words like ephemeral, ephemeral and malodorous. And, you, and, and it is all, I think, an indication that, in fact, the White House did get the better of the deal. They're not taking a victory lap at the moment because they don't want to upset uh, what looks like a pretty positive course in the Senate. But you'll, I think you'll see them perhaps do that at some point because they deserve it. And we can take a look at some of the provisions. Ed mentioned a few of the things, but this is a comparison between the two bills. This is the House GOP bill that they passed. This is what they said th they were prepared to have go into law. And this is the deal that ultimately emerged. They wanted to cut, I'll give you just a couple of examples. They wanted to cut domestic spending, non-defense spending, to $555 billion. It, was seven, it would have been 740, it was $744 billion in the current fiscal year. It ended up at $704. Um, Ed mentioned these 10-year caps. This is really important. They wanted to cap this thing for 10 years. They only got two. And so if the Democrats were to be back in power in two years, they can undo as much of this as they want to. He mentioned the IRS clawback. They wanted $80 billion. They got Maybe not even 21 billion. I won't get into the weeds on that, but that number could be smaller. And the irony here is that the IRS actually, more money the IRS actually reduces the deficit because then they can collect more from the tax evaders and tax avoiders out there. But nonetheless, uh, most of this was preserved. And this is also important. I'm going to talk about both of these in a little bit more detail in a second, which is uh, the Republicans wanted a very broad work requirement. They wanted basically everybody receiving public assistance other than Social Security to be working. And they got a tiny fraction of that, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, on the student loan situation, where you know there has been this moratorium, the Republicans wanted every penny of that money paid back. They're not getting any of that. All they're getting is that the freeze that's in existence on student lo loan repayments would end, which it's going to anyway, and it would restrict the ability to put in another moratorium, which nobody wants to do anyway. So essentially, there's no difference on, the, on student loans for what is going would have happened anyway. Um, no change on taxes on either side, no increases in the loopholes closed. We can discuss whether that's the best idea, but that's where they came out. And then, importantly, the Republicans wanted to repeal all of the green energy tax credits in the Inflation Reduction Act, and they got zero on that provision. So as we move over to your second chart, Steve, obviously Speaker McCarthy had touted this deal to his caucus saying we cut $1.5 trillion over a decade. That's a massive savings. It's more than we've been able to get in many, many years, so we ought to vote for it. The Freedom Caucus disagreed that it was enough, but enough Republicans agreed to get the bill through. So what were the spending cuts really like as you look inside this legislation? Sure. Let's take a look at that. So, as I said before, we can look at the fiscal 2024, that's the next year, of non-defense discretionary. That's where all the action was. That's what was on the table. Nothing else was even on the table, really, to be changed. And so, the president in his budget proposed a bit over $800 billion. As I said before, this is the 2023 amount. This is $744 billion. It, uh, the the, the uh, Republicans wanted it down at this 550 level that we talked about and did it up here, about 40 billion, as I said, less than what we are going to spend anyway, and then a bit less than, but 110 billion less than Bi uh, the Biden uh, proposal, 145 billion more than the Republican proposal. So we didn't end up in the middle. We ended up on the Biden side of the ledger. And then this one is really important. So as I mentioned a minute ago, the Republicans wanted a lot of these. This is SNAP. This is our food stamp program. The Republicans wanted a lot of these people out there working and a very broad work requirement. They also wanted a work requirement on what we colloquially call the welfare program. They got absolutely zero on welfare. On food stamps, all they got was that people between 50 and 54 would have a work requirement, but they exempted veterans, they exempted people with housing problems from all of this. And so there are some numbers coming out suggesting that actually
there may be fewer people working or at least required to work under this than what we have now, but certainly only at worst a very tiny sliver yeah. more and nobody on the welfare side of the equation. So, Steve, you know, since uh, you didn't vote for Donald Trump, there will be some people that will suggest that you're a communist uh, and uh, trafficking children like all of us. Uh, they suggest uh, I'm a communist because I actually believe in small government and because I've been fighting for it my entire life. And, well, they support a guy that increased the deficit and the debt more than any human being in world history. Talk about communists. Talk about socialists. Talk about reckless big spenders. That's who they are. So let's talk about who we are now with that background so people understand where you're coming from. You and I have been critical of massive spending. You, you and I have talked about our concerns about debt. Even during the Obama administration, you were part of an organization that urged President Obama, Republicans and Democrats to bring down the national debt. Uh, to be more fiscally responsible. You've been critical of the Biden administration, much to their consternation about big spending programs and, and, and inflation. You've warned that inflation was coming, that it wasn't transitory. I can go down the list, uh, but you have been, you know, you, 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 you've been very concerned about deficits and debt. So with that as a background, with, 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 with us being concerned about the debt, about $31 trillion debt, which Donald Trump's contributed to more than anybody in American history. Um, how does this deal work for us? I know the national debt still goes up, but is this a good balance between the two sides as far as you're concerned as someone who's been concerned about the debt for years? Well, look, it's a start. It does reduce the debt and deficit over uh, uh, over the long term. But let's just take a look at what some of the history that you referred to, Joe, and I think you'll see what the magnitude of the problem is. So this is, this is our history of revenues and expenses uh, on a national basis, uh, and all this stuff in the middle is deficit, which becomes debt. If you go back to the late 90s, remember that under the Clinton, in the Clinton years, we actually had a surplus for a few years, and then we got into the, the financial crisis and it all ballooned. Then we started working it down, working it down, and then Trump shows up right here. And since Trump showed up, what's happening? The deficit and the debt gets larger. Obviously, there was COVID, but even before there was COVID, you had the Trump tax cuts, which were supposed to pay for themselves. And instead, you can see revenues going down here as a percentage of GDP. On the spending side, for all the brave talk, spending actually started to go up even before the COVID spike. And so all this pink stuff between these two lines, all this pink stuff are deficits and debt that Trump added to our problem. Under Biden, you can see outlays starting to come down, revenue starting to go up. We're starting to get that deficit down. This will help, but it, but it is a big problem that in which Trump was a contributor, not a helper toward getting uh, to, to a lower deficit picture. Um, but we shouldn't also forget, Joe, and this is something you and I have talked about a lot over the years, that we do have a long-term structural issue that we have to think about. And I don't want to end on a kind of Debbie Downer note, but we got to talk about all, <laughs> all the aspects of this. We've been cutting from non-defense discretionary. And you can see that non-defense discretionary, which is everything from the Labor Department, EPA, FDA, a lot of agencies that really make our lives <laughs> better, we've been cutting from them uh, in a gradual way for a long time in order to try to offset the fact that there are large parts of our budget which do include Social Security and Medicare, and I'm not suggesting you go in there and start hacking away at them, but we have to recognize that as a percent of our GDP, those costs have gone up, squeezing this down, and that's a trend that unfortunately is not showing any real sign of abating.